Hi there. Uh, my name is Anthony, and I'm from Maestro Music Centers out in Levittown, Long Island, in New York. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the availability of the flute modelers. I'm on a Lowry A series. I'm on the Prestige, which was the very first A model that they had. The A generation for Lowry uh, introduced 96 tone oscillators, double the number of tone oscillators you had before, so it had much uh, more dramatic changes in sound than any of the S generation that came before it. The way that these work, and I did this video for the Roland uh, Platinum, but I figured let me do that here, and I'm going to talk about some of the voices that came with this generation. When you use the flute sounds on the instrument, and they light up red above them, well that means that the organ is set to be flowery type organ sound. And in this case, none of the flute modelers are lit, so that is exactly what I'm going to get. It has no spinning right now. It's a traditional Lowry sound. Okay. If I go to hit the button that says tibia, well now the lights above the keys turned yellow, orange. And now they are like a theater organ, a pipe theater organ. There's the Lowry version. There's the tibia version. It's subtle, but it is different. There are characteristics about the way the sound it comes out that's different. If I now press jazz, the lights turn green, and now this is the sound of a drawbar organ, like a Hammond type organ. almost a little bit of a pop in the sound, they're a little bit more percussive than I would have had before. If I press both of the flute buttons that say tibia and jazz together, um, then I have an option of three types of organ. Smooth, which lights the lights red as well, although both of the flute buttons will light up here. It's a little more mellow than a Lowry. Diapason, which is the sound of a pipe organ. Let me turn off the spinning, because pipe organs don't spin. In church organ terminology, these are sometimes called the principles. And then the last one is string, which is confusing for some people. It's not making string sound. It's selecting the string pipe. When you look at a pipe organ, usually the pipes that are in the front, they're a little bit smaller, are the string pipes. So they have almost like a reedy quality to them. So that's the flute modeler. And they work in conjunction solely with the clear tabs on the Lowry. Okay? When you use them, the clear tabs, which are the flutes, the flute footage is 8 foot, 4 foot, 2 and 2 thirds, 2, 1, 16, those, those work with that. Around those tabs on the instrument, there are additional tabs. There are purple tabs. Those are the sound of actual theater organs. And these theater organs have actually been sampled in Chicago, in a theater outside of Chicago, by Lowry themselves. Let's put on the trap. Okay, now, they have their own separate library of sounds. The library buttons on the Lowry are called the genius buttons. There's a theater genius for the bottom and the theater genius on the top. So you have the purple tab, which are theater organ sounds. They are separate sound engines than the rest of the instrument, okay? And then there are, there's a lower one, it's black, an upper one, Genius Tab. It can be any of the library voices that exist inside the instrument. There are hundreds of them. I think close to 500 in this model. Then there's one that's called Vocal Ensemble that creates a vocal type organ sound. It's not going to be confused with, with a choir. And then there are yellow string tabs. They, again, are not the orchestral strings. They're almost more of an analog quality. They're supposed to be an organ, an organ voice. Lauer used to call that symphonic strings, okay? And there are some green tabs. Those are for sustain of the sound. But I'm going to go through some of the library sounds because the library voices, which we call Genius on a Lowry, Others on a Roland, 
Um, in this generation, it really was spectacular. There were some really magnificent sounds. But the one thing that's sort of key in using them is that the dynamic keying, the touch, initial touch sensitivity, be on. Because there's a lot in the sound that can come up. There are things like balalikas. There are a bunch of new bass sounds that were put in. There were hand bells that would repeat that automatically. There's, I'm going to start with this sound, which is a cello Stradivari. And, you know, you can dial by number, if you know the sound number in this generation, and push a genius button. See, when I press the key hard, I get one sound. Light, I get a different sound. All right? So I can get this really lovely, deep Stradivarius. There also were... And if I don't have the keypad up, I just have the regular screen, and I, and I touch that button, the name Trello Stradivari will come up. And if I touch the screen, tap it under where the name is, the sound number will come up. So if I, if I happen to love that sound and I always want to use it, I can punch that in. Now, on our newer generation, you have my picks on the Liberty. You can save that sound there. Um, or it could, some of the newer sounds are in quick picks. My big thing with these new models has been, you know, they, they have USB ports, so a lot of people save their data on the sticks, but... They want to transfer that stick to the next generation, and my thing is, if you're spending money on a new instrument, why do you want it, the new one to sound like your old one, when you have all these new voices? So for me, I tell people, the USB port is there to help support your playing of this model. There are different, even different effects will happen in the next generation. So I'm not a proponent of you going out and buying people's software that loads more sound. It's not loading more sound in. It's taking the sound that already exists in your organ and just organizing it differently. So, you do what you need to do to play your music, but think of it, it works for this model. When you move on, start with new data, new sounds, new rhythms. You know, you want to sound like you're playing a new instrument. That's the fun of it. Um, so, you know, you can touch the button and I could scroll or I can punch in these numbers. And punching in the number, you just go to keypad, you would find the number of the sound you want. There are lists that come with the organ's genius list. They're in the owner's manual. And you punch in a sound. And one of the nice things about that is you can always go back and pick a sound you want. And what I do is I usually photocopy the manuals, that page, and so I mark when the new model comes out what's new. So I know what's new. When this model came, with this 96 tone generators versus 48 before, twice the amount of memory for the sound, there were 70 brand new sounds put in here. I mean, there was a lot of sound capability. This is a new one, Choir Stage Ah. I happen to like the next one, which is Choir Stage Ooh. I thought that was a really, really great sound. And there were cowbells, cowbells that repeated, and clavinets, and taiko drums. And the next one that I, I think is important were the flutes. And they were really... This is where you could tell that there was a new sound engine. This one flutters. Oh, no, this is the ballad one. Sorry. one which will flutter instead of that smooth ballad. French horns that were far away, and then the next range of sound where you really could hear the difference was in the guitars. This first one is called Guitar Acoustic Bright. It's exactly as the sound claims to be. Um, the next one is called acoustic rezo. Think of like a resonance. Okay? 
Now I pressed the key only once. But you hear a second attack of the string, right? Those of you who are familiar with Bill Curry, the, the genius that makes the rhythm styles on the Lowry instrument, will know that he likes the sound called a dobro. And the dobro, I always call the there's a new sheriff in town sound. That's the sound, like Deadwood. <laughs> so if you press hard, it'll do that, okay? Lightly, it won't do that. I have a very firm hand because I play piano too, so you know I do press my keys rather on the firm side. So you have the dobro, then you have the flamenco guitars. That's the first one. The second one will have. When I press the key harder, I'm going to get um, like a ping. I'm looking at my list and it's far away and my eyes are not great. A ping. Hear the difference? So you push that top note harder, I get that little ping of the guitar. Uh, there were muted guitars, there were some harmonic sounds. Um, there was a really neat harmonica that was amplified. There was an amped one, there was a jazz one. Hit sounds, we don't use those really much, but they are, you know, orchestra hit type effect uh, kotos. There were Lowry voices that were programmed in. They didn't actually use the vibratrum, but you could use an effect and get the rotary effect onto those. Um, my dad's Italian. There was a really, really nice mandolin orchestra where the, or mandolins move, sort of. It's nice. They're coming from all around me. Really, it's a great sound. Really, really nice, and it makes Italian people very happy to hear their mandolin. There was a new electric piano sound crystal. It's actually out of order on your piano list. And then there was the piano from the LX version. The LX version of instruments was the old Celebration, uh, uh, um, not the Royale. Um, I can't remember any more the names of those old organs, but the L generation LX, it was LX and LC, the large LX, Serenade, that was another one. Um, they had a nice piano. It was a little on the bright side. I kind of liked it, you know. It doesn't have as much sensitivity. It doesn't sound as re realistic today as the new ones do, but there is some usefulness because of its clarity and, and its brightness. And there's a sound on this one called Piano Wide, sound number two. On our new generation, that number has been replaced with Piano Concerto, Piano Concert, you know, much beautiful sound, so that was removed. Another uh, sound that was put in is a phased electric piano. You almost hear it going like wah. phasing effect of that. So that was a sound Steely Dan used to use a lot. If you listen to their kind of music, you'll hear that. Then in the saxophone section, 50s type saxophone. And one that growls.
actually is called sax tenor growl, you know, so you wouldn't miss it. Then there were scat sounds that were added where if you hit the key harder, it would make a second sound. One of them was he added uh, sounds that said do and ba, but this particular one, um, if you hit hard to get down. Otherwise it's do and ba and do and ba and do and ba. There was a new string ensemble three. Very nice and full and rich. And then the trumpets, you now get, you know, now you move down to the trumpet area. That's the Louis Armstrong trumpet. That was a very special vibrato. And of course, Louis Armstrong also used to shake the trumpet, so you have that sound as well. And plunger effects, you know. That's really good if you play the stripper, and you could use the burlesque rhythm for that sound. It's perfect for that. And of course, regular ones that would shake. Um, and all the vocals. One of the new vocals that was kind of nice was called, they say hey. Hey, 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 hey. Or they say la. La, 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 la. You can use it for Christmas time, and then they have ones that go wa or ooh. ooh. Okay? Or one that goes ooh wa if I press the key harder. You know the wa? So a lot of that dynamic king is really important on these sounds to get those, all that new stuff. And of course there were a couple of additional synthesizer voices that were added. So you know, those are just, in the library, are all these new sounds that you could use. So if you happen to like saxophone, you, know, you can try those new ones. Now, beyond this model, there came the Imperial and the Sterling, which added new sounds. And, uh, and then the Patriot, and now we're in the Liberty, which added a few more new sounds. So there are still additional, there's new saxophones and new clarinets, some other guitar samples that are new in there, some more bass samples. So, you know, as you get these new instruments, you can find the new voices and really use them. And of course, when you use those sounds, the songs sound so much better because you're using something that you didn't have last time you played it. You can put on the Lowry, your tab voice is on all the way across. You can put every single one on if you want. And then you can put, you know, there's a genius for the lower, so any of the library voices can go there. There's a genius in the pedal division, I could put one down there. My genius tabs for the theater sound are specific just for that area, so you can't use these voices there. But I have an upper tab, and then I've got two red genius buttons. Those are polyphonic, they play more than one note at a time, you could do a chord with it. And two monophonic, in the solo section, those play only one note. So I can actually put five library voices on the upper keyboard, or I can move a couple of the sounds to the lower. I can split the orchestral and the solo between the upper and the lower, so I can play chords on both. As a matter of fact, this model does automatic chords on the lower keyboard, so if you want to play octaves and you run out of notes, you can use that and it will help you. You can play one note and it will play the octaves for you, even though the keys don't exist. So I thought that that would be very interesting to play. These new A-Series Lowry's have great, great sound. The quality of the sound is really, really way improved from what it was in the S generation and definitely what it was improved from any of the generations prior, the L or the NT if you're in one of those old MX2s or um, Heritages or things like that. This is, it's like night and day, you know. So, um, you know, you may want to consider trading in and getting a new one and upgrading your technology. At this point, pretty much in an S generation, you're going to hear a huge difference in sound. It's so. I mean, that's not even going back that far. But from them, that's a ten-year-old instrument to this. Shocking what you're going to get. This A generation remains today. So all of our new models are using these sounds, sa same sound samples. So you know, if you're on this or a Sterling or uh, an Imperial, they're very similar. Our new Liberty is an LE model, a little bit different slightly different sound happening there, but still very close to what you're going to get on these. All right? Great instrument. Needs a home. Call us if you want one. <laughs> okay, thanks. Have a great day.